Kita tunggu keluar live eh. Okay, kita uh, kita masih menunggu uh, okay, kita sudah live sebenarnya tapi belum keluar lagi dekat saya punya Facebook boleh punya boleh pinjam tak pinjam okay. okay baru ada 13 orang ada baru 13 orang 15 Tunggu sekejap ya. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Uh, nampaknya kita sudah pun bersiaran ya. Okay. Kita baru. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. A very good evening to uh, to you, Dr. Shafiq. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Kita menunggu sekejap lagi. Uh, Okey tuan-tuan dan puan-puan uh, viewers uh, Facebook saya uh, saya ucapkan selamat datang kepada uh, bahagian dua uh, forum kita pada yang pagi pertamanya kita dah pun buat pagi tadi ya eh. uh, alhamdulillah bersama puan Hafsah di mana kita bercakap tentang pendidikan uh, dalam bahagian dua uh, forum ini kita akan bercakap tentang memperkasakan pendidikan dalam pendidikan ya eh. Jadi uh, terlebih dahulu uh, saya ingin mengucapkan kesyukuran ya, kepada Allah uh, kerana dengan izinnya juga dapat kita um, bersua pada malam ini ya. Uh, lain pun nampak okey uh, bersama saya uh, boleh say hi Dr. Shafiq. Hello. Apa khabar? Apa khabar? Uh, sebenarnya Dr. Shafiq ni, dia yeah, ex-student saya uh, Saya kenal dia dah lama lah daripada dia melapor diri Tahun 1 uh, program Ijazah Sajana Muda uh, Majoring dalam Sains uh, Saya tak ingat lah tahun berapa eh 2010 kot, 2011 macam tu Eh 2000, 2000 berapa eh 2010 You daftar kat Raja Melayu Lama sangat dah 2000, 2007 Uh, 2007 oi lah. Amanya ya. Uh, masa tu ingus lagi eh. Uh, Alhamdulillah ya. Uh, sekarang um, saya bercakap dengan um, anak murid saya yang kini telah pun uh, uh, dah habis dah sampai PhD ni ya. Okey, izinkan saya memperkenalkan ya uh, special guest kita. Oh alhamdulillah dah 50 dah 50 orang ya. Okey, izinkan saya perkenalkan uh, Dr. Shafiq Aiman. Okey. Ni ex student saya di kampus Raja Melewa. Okey. Dia graduate tahun 2012 kat kampus saya. Okey. Uh, sejurus uh, habis di Ijazah Sarjana Muda di Raja Melewa. Uh, beliau melanjutkan pelajaran di peringkat sarjana di mana uh, beliau telah pergi ke Universiti Brunel, uh, Brunel Universiti London, ya. Yeah, dalam bidang pendidikan sains, mathematics and technology. Ya, 2014 tu dan uh, saya ucap tanya lah kepada uh, Dr. Shafiq telah berjaya mendapat keputusan distinction ya wah ini saya saya perasan sikit saya bangga lah ya dapat menghasilkan ya, murid yang hebat ya kemudian uh, selepas semester uh, meneruskan pengajian menjalankan uh, fellowship di Yale University dalam bidang uh, di United States dalam bidang cognitive science ya. 2017 dengan grant pendidikan daripada universiti tersebut ya dapat grant 
Dan akhirnya uh, Syafiq memperoleh PhD-nya daripada University College London dalam bidang Science Education baru saja uh, 2019. Uh, beliau sempat sebenarnya balik ke Malaysia dan bagi saya tesis tebal. Uh, nanti kalau ada kat meja tu bolehlah tunjuk ya. Eh. Hmm, saya dah banyak dah merata pergi ceramah bawa tesis tu untuk apa memberi inspirasi motivasi kepada uh, anak murid saya dan setiap kali saya ceramah tentang penyelidikan saya akan bawa ya uh, sebab saya kira Dr Shafiq ni memang saya cukup bangga sebab um, saya dulu masa buat PhD saya guna reka bentuk action research saya memang passion ya tentang action research ni um, I'm a practitioner actually dan saya cukup bangga because uh, Dr Shafiq lah orang yang pertama murid saya lah yang uh, PhD nya pun guna uh, Rekam Bentuk Action Research ya? Okay, uh, sekarang ini um, Dr. Shafiq merupakan uh, fellow fellow pasca PhD di University of Dundee, Scotland dalam bidang STEM Education Okay, uh, saya ingat saya Dr. Shafiq ni dulu uh, di Raja Melewa seorang yang aktif ya, dia bukan saja aktif, dia banyak sangat aktif ni kalau dalam apa tu, wakilan pelajar kalau ada aktiviti pertandingan-pertandingan yang bercakap-bercakap ni dia memang suka lah ya? uh, banyaklah menang ya? um, dan kalau kita nak buat program-program ya, dia, dia sangat suka lah volunteer, suka relawan ya? uh, saya ingat lagi ya um, kita buat dulu seminar kat Port Dickson kan uh, ya? ok uh, sebelum kita nak bercakap pasal research ni Dr. Syafiq cuba update sikit tentang covid dekat UK tu Ah kita dekat Malaysia ni dah bertambah tambah kurang macam mana di UK? Um, Silakan. Cuma tu saya tu saya lah. Um, saya rasa dalam keadaan yang saya rasa dalam um, masih dalam under control. Um, tapi mungkin um, dengan um, keadaan di Malaysia dan UK mungkin berbeza. Keadaan mungkin nampak teruk di sini tapi population lebih besar. Okay. Um, kami dalam keadaan lockdown tapi um, dibenarkan untuk keluar for example untuk exercise, untuk uh, untuk untuk jogging, untuk pergi ke taman tak apa tapi kena jaga social distancing dan um, rakyat sini nampak cukup well behaved um, kita tak nampaklah yang ada buat mass gathering dekat taman ataupun apa dan um, memandangkan ini merupakan you know like um, the like the global crisis most of the um most of the world trying to trying to do whatever they can so dalam bidang akademik we just continue to work as usual tapi kita bekerja daripada rumah yang biasa kita lakukan um yang biasa kita lakukan macam mesyuarat dan um dan seminar dan sebagainya namun perubahan dari segi macam mana kita menjalankan research um juga Uh, terkesan kerana um, kita tak dapat menjalankan for example like uh, mendapatkan data ataupun um, menjalankan uh, seminar yang memerlukan um, uh, proses bersemuka, uh, bersemuka dengan um, kita punya partisipan ataupun orang yang terlibat dalam penyelidikan kita. Namun um, kita telah menjangkakan perkara ini akan berlarutan pada jangka masa yang panjang dan pihak universiti telah uh, forecasting Uh, bagaimana untuk kita melakukan um, menjalankan ataupun menggerakkan aktiviti-aktiviti ini seperti biasa dalam proses um, alam maya ataupun online um, dan dan juga um, kebanyakan yang uh, kita telah transform dari segi, for example, like uh, dari segi akademiknya uh, kita telah transform pada uh, kepada um, online 100% yang sebelum ini mungkin hanyalah dalam 50% tapi 100% telah dilakukan semakin lama. Tapi ia merupakan satu benda yang sangat challenging. For example, um, dari segi uh, bidang sains yang memerlukan penggunaan lab dan sebagainya. Dan uh, di UK, hmm. di NUSI, kita telah menukar framework bagaimana untuk menilai pelajar-pelajar uh, ke arah um, ke arah alam maya ataupun online. Hmm, okay. Actually, um, macam saya sendirilah ya. Sebenarnya, um, aktiviti yang kita buat sekarang ni sebenarnya is part of my interaction with my student ya. Yeah. Actually untungnya waktu PKP ni saya boleh bawa masuklah all these people from all over the world lah. Percuma 
kan uh, before you actually I dah bawa another student yang dia tunjuk macam mana present in the classroom sekarang ni kita macam di KPM kita dah boleh gunalah all these apps from Google ni secara percuma terima kasih kepada ya, kepada KPM lah hmm, sekarang ni kita dah dah sangat macam saya sendiri lah saya tak pernah lah guna Google Meet ya, untuk kelas so bila PKP ni kita jadi macam macam-macam idea lah. This is one of it. Di mana I can bring in. Kalau dulu susah ya. Uh, kalau gunakan digital platform ni. So I can bring you into my classroom. Uh, secara percuma lah ya. Itulah hikmahnya kan. Uh, PKP ni Alhamdulillah ya. Uh, sebenarnya untuk makluman uh, Syafiq. Kita uh, kursus yang saya ajar sekarang ni. Lah, um, research and education. 70% students do the uh, research report ya. They actually do the research. And 20% they they do the presentation and 10% they write a, a research article uh, so actually it's 100% uh, no examination so this interaction is actually hopefully kita nak mm, dengar lah ya yeah, activity research yang you buat and hopefully your presence here can inspire my students lah uh, to embark their research journey uh, especially uh, dia punya postgraduate nanti insyaAllah hopefully you can inspire them lah Okay, now um, saya sebenarnya bila uh, dapat uh, info daripada Syafiq yang dia kata dia buat post, post doc lah, post yeah. uh, saya selalu juga dengar ni, tapi actually saya tak apa faham apa benda yang uh, post doktoral ni buat ya yeah. uh, buat research ke, ngajar ke, ke research, research saja ke please please kita, what actually you do as a, a post doktoral punya fellow ni Boleh silakan Dr. Syafiq. Um, well, um, also actually, um, ataupun di, kalau dalam bahasa Melayu yang mungkin pasca kedoktoran aku, um, dia dia basically um, satu satu what we call like early career researcher punya position um, untuk orang uh, training ataupun um, training dari segi dari segi penyelidikan macam mana nak um, menjalankan penyelidikan uh, target dalam large amount of grant um, and then macam mana kita nak menjalankan research dan sebagainya tapi mungkin di Malaysia um, uh, position ni tak berapa familiar di Universiti Malaysia mungkin ada dalam dalam setengah bidang iaitu um, biasanya bidang ini dalam bidang uh, bidang sains um, yang menjalankan eksperimen di makmal dan sebagainya. Namun di UK kita ada juga dalam bidang social science atau education yang kita ada uh, position postdoc yang yang membantu mereka untuk um, progress lebih kerja dalam 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 bidang penyelidikan ataupun research. Um, because you know, see di UK, for example, um, sekarang um, kita mungkin ada what we call a research group yang memerlukan um, banyak training dalam bidang penyelidikan sebelum mereka melakukan penyelidikan ataupun mengetuai uh, geran penyelidikan yang yang sangat besar dan uh, saya mengambil keputusan untuk menjalankan ataupun mengambil uh, research kerana saya mempunyai um, well one of my research interests of course dalam bidang penyelidikan dan uh, um, saya suka untuk berada dalam research ruli ini dalam um, bukan sahaja untuk um, memperkembangkan dalam bidang uh, uh, pendidikan dan juga uh, dan juga dalam bidang um, what we call research method. <laughs> um, I was trying to, to 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 get the word from my brain. I'm sorry. Um, but um, so postdoc adalah merupakan first stage. Dan kalau dalam dalam research route ni uh, selepas ni uh, mungkin ada dalam uh, position ni itu, for example like fellow pendidikan apa tu research fellow dan seterusnya senior research fellow dan jawatan-jawatan ini adalah setaraf dengan jawatan for example di universiti jawatan seperti lecturer, senior lecturer dan the end of the postdoc for example um, kita boleh um, apply for example sekiranya kita layak setelah beberapa projek penyelidikan yang kita buat kita boleh um, apply untuk professorship so sama oh. seperti macam jawatan lecturer cuma ia lebih kepada uh, research semata-mata kita tidak perlukan uh, mengajar student dan sebagainya oh oh uh, you tak mengajar lah tak, tak ada mengajar lah uh, Ah, ya betul. Tapi saya juga ada uh, supervised master student dissertation okay. yang yang mana yang yang diorang buat uh, dissertation ataupun thesis kita supervise diorang 
uh, sebagai first of the training uh, ke arah, oh. ke arah research lah. Mm-hmm. Sebelum kita boleh supervise oh, uh, okay, PhD okay. student afterward. Alright. Oh, that means you are solely doing research lah. Basically, that's your focus lah. Tak ada mengajar, tak ada student lah. Except your supervising thesis lah ya. Eh? Okay. Yes. Alright. Uh, jadi, um, saya tengok you punya tadi, uh, I ask for your biodata tadi. Saya tengok you dah banyak ya eh, menjalankan. Tengok ada pernah dapat keran ya. Um, dapat pula ya. Uh, distinction kan. Uh, can you share with uh, with us, with my students here, um, research-research ataupun apa tu, um, isu-isu kajian-kajian yang telah you jalankan uh, di peringkat masters dengan PhD tu sebenarnya yang sama ke? Uh, apa yang you buat sebenarnya for your masters and PhD? And also you ada pergi dekat US kan? US tu buat apa eh? <laughs> Itu salah satu daripada uh, fellowship yang saya jalankan. Uh, dia merupakan satu satu what we call training. Okay. Oh itu yang lepas master eh? Aha. Boleh boleh ceritakan tak all the research yang you dah buat ni? Well, Ada yang melibatkan my... Malaysia ke? Oh yes, of course. Uh, my research interest always lie um, in the field of like um, science curriculum development, pedagogy um, and assessment uh, and of course with particular interest of the pedagogical approach of the Nature of science and scientific inquiry, and then um, I always been um, interested in supporting science teachers um, to enhance their science teaching um, using an inquiry approach, with a view that this uh, pedagogical approach um, is at the at the heart of the teaching and learning science. So I have been always passionate about integrating um, research and classroom practice, uh, and promoting um, teachers' engagement with research and. Because I do believe that um, um, inculcating a research culture and skill is is something that you can advocate change and close the gap between the research and practice. And therefore, since my uh, master's degree, um, I did a research in um, in scientific inquiry, and then I did um, action research in terms of the, the the type of collaborative action research where I integ- inter- well I collaborate with scientists in Malaysia trying to trying to um, implement some sort of um, what we call approach of uh, scientific inquiry. So I brought back the, the modules and the approach that I have learned, that I have been um, doing, for example, in the UK to Malaysia, and then trying the approach to some of the teachers in Malaysia. And then interestingly, from that sort of finding, I have expanded um, the research of my my, my interest to the my uh, to my PhD level, and then I have been offered to do PhD at the um, University College London UCL um, under supervision of Professor Michael Rice, um, one of the top scholar in term, uh, in science education. So I have been doing um, action research have been for quite long now because I've been doing for my master's degree and also for my PhD. And in terms of my PhD, what I have been learn during my master's degree i have um improved and then trying to develop um a little a little bit further from what i have been doing so it's more like kind of um deeper going to deeper um action research methodology more specific um even though it it doesn't it doesn't really um include the entire country in malaysia but it has been impactful some of the particular areas that i have been doing the research about so um it was very fascinating. Then I have been um, enjoying doing um, action research um, to date. Okay, saya harap ya eh, uh, students, uh, students, students saya yang baru saja menjalankan uh, uh, about the majority yang telah menjalankan kajian didakan uh, dapat mengambil iktibar lah di mana Dr. Shafiq ya uh, daripada peringkat ijazah sarjana muda dan masters-nya dia macam meneruskan ya eh, daripada bermula daripada walaupun saya ingat lagi ya eh, uh, it's a very small uh, satu research yang kerdil you have brought it to uh, satu yang sampai level yang tertinggi lah sampai PhD ya eh. uh, ini yang uh, perlu dicontohi oleh anak-anak murid dan ini anak-anak uh, student sekarang ya yeah. uh, Uh, di mana uh, Dr. Shafiq dulu pun seperti anda juga ya yeah? mula dulu pun blur kan uh, first time buat research di peringkat sarjana muda uh, uh, dan nampak ya eh, uh, Shafiq telah pun berkembang sampai ke peringkat PhD 
dan tetap menjalankan. Tak ingat saya masa you buat first degree dulu pun keadaan inquiry kan? Masa first degree ah, tu. Ya betul. Saya ha. uh, saya masih menge... Ya betul. Saya, saya masih mengekalkan uh, what we call research interest yang sama sejak daripada hmm. mungkin 5-6-7 tahun yang lepas. Hmm. Uh, Namun, keadaan itu Allah um, um, of course berkembang um, apabila saya lebih belajar tentang keadaan tersebut, hmm. lebih belajar dan kita lebih uh, mendapat perkara yang baru. So when you never stop learning, you will stop hmm. find because because the knowledge is quite infinity. So bila you 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 cari apa yang uh, the gist area in, in even though in that very simple particular area, you will find a very um meaningful knowledge that you would like to pursue a lot more, a lot more, and it's a lot bigger than that. Because I never changed my uh, I never changed my passion of my interest. It has it has been always in the same area of interest. Um, so, for example, because of um, w- when I started my first degree, the final project was about the inquiry learning, just a very tiny amount of, for example, the, the questioning. So when I go deeper into my master's degree about the questioning, I try to figure out what is the type of questioning in inquiry that's supposed or supposed to be uh, supposed to be doing by the teachers, because actual research is is stand by the heart of the researcher itself. It's not from it's not from the children. It's not from the student that you are teaching. It's from yourself where you reflecting yourself, your behavior, your, the way that you teaching, the way that you questioning the children. So you should not look at just solely solely focus on the children or the student itself. You should look at yourself. How are you going to improve? When you're trying to reflect yourself, when you're being very critical about yourself, and then you know what's the problem and then how you're going to improve that. The way you improve that, you have to learn. You have to learn various ways of doing things in much uh, probably more challenging, more deeper knowledge about that particular area because knowledge is not just uh, knowledge is not just fit in one textbook. It could be various of textbooks and then there have been so many examples, for example, throughout the world, how how this sort of um, approach has been applied in, in, in the teaching. So, um, yeah, I have been doing um, inquiry, scientific inquiry, inquiry-based approach and um, has been for quite uh, some time now. Okay, uh, yang di peringkat PhD tu, actually what, uh, apa yang you buat eh? Yang research for PhD level tu? Well, I'm trying to um, um, to understand a bit more about the how you implement inquiry approach um, in in for example in primary sorry in, sorry in pri- in primary school and then the way that you implement how you uh, improve your pedagogical practices of delivering inquiry approach and then in my um, in my PhD uh, was to look at about the uh, questioning was to look at about the planning was to look at about the um, question uh, sorry assessment and also um, the perception of the epistemological of the researcher itself. Because action research is a real world research, it's more like, um, it's, it's more like about um, starting from the classroom itself and then you're looking at to the teacher's pedagogical uh, techniques of implementing things rather than you're looking at the children why, uh, for example, why, why the uh, kenapa student talk tak boleh um, exit well dalam performance in science. Kita tak melihat dengan perkara itu. Kita lebih lihat ke, uh, kepada, for example, uh, apa yang kamu boleh improve lebih further. Walaupun um, student probably well behave ataupun exit well, but again, you have to reflect yourself whether you are doing it right because nobody really look at your 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 performance in the classroom except the, the student. Yes. So that's what yeah. I did in the um, in, in the in the actual research because sometimes students can be not very critical in terms of criticize the teachers because they don't know about you, and then you might not be looking at um, to invite other teachers to come to your classroom and then critique yourself because you might not mm-hmm. be very comfortable about that. So the way to do is mm-hmm. possibly, for example, like recording yourself and then look at the way that you teach the children. Don't look at the student, but look at yourself. Look at how you teach the children, mm. how you deliver the question. Are there any um, stages of delivering uh, the question 
or is that really spark the ideas or or is it not so this is something that you could be improved you, you might be very embarrassed to look at yourself when you do the teaching but again um you know it is something that you could reflect and be critical about yourself well uh yeah sangat sangat beruntung ya eh, sebab macam yalah macam ketika saya buat action research dulu way back tahun 1999 ya eh. Uh, actually research ni di Malaysia belum lagi diterima ketika itu eh. in fact uh, saya ingat lagi for PhD memang uh, memang saya mula-mula bila mencadangkan untuk menjalankan action research pun tak tak diterima so ini mungkin cabaran uh, di Malaysia sebab uh, action research ni belum lagi begitu tu meluas di peringkat uh, post graduate ya eh. uh, tak seperti mana di UK dan di US dah dah, dah banyak saya tengok ya eh. Sebab um, inilah yang sebenarnya bila saya mendengar inilah sebenarnya yang yang saya cuba perjuangkan di mana teacher as researcher ni uh, bagi kita tak boleh take menyalah satu, satu kita tunjuk jari kepada anak murid kita tiga memandang kepada kita kan uh, jadi uh, research ni kita tak nak kita bukan nak prove anything we are just improving ourselves kan uh, itu yang saya sangat banggalah kerana ada orang yang okey anak murid saya yang telah meneruskan perjuangan dalam menjalankan kajian tindakan ni because it's always been my passion lah bila saya discover tentang action research in masa itu 1998 saya bila saya dengar bila saya baca saya kata this is the best research especially for those yang yang sambung belajar if they 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 are teaching and belajar pada masa yang sama i think action research is the best uh, recommend to choose lah okey sambil bekerja ada yang uh, apa bercuti Uh, dia tak bercuti, dia tak bercuti. Dia bekerja dan dan sambung belajar. Ya. Uh, jadi saya rasa AR is the the best, the best way to the best like bentuk to choose lah. Ya. So I'm I'm very happy with your sharing. Dia yes, uh, sikit sebanyak. You dah pun beritahu saya. Saya baru nak tanya sebenarnya, but you already answered. Ya. Yeah, um, the, the the best part of action research lah. Why you choose action research? Kan. Uh, kita lebih melihat kepada. Uh, amalan kita kan uh, jadi ini I mean, yang saya I can, well I can I can I can share a story where um, mm. where I first proposed my supervisor about okay let me do let me do action research for my PhD because I think um, this is the only way that I could I could prove that action research is feasible uh, for doctorate and then he was very supportive um, yeah. and then has been absolutely brilliant in terms of accepting the justification why I need to do action research not other type of research because I do feel that because this is kind of real world research and then it's really impactful the way the way that you teach your professional learning you're not doing mm. the research just for the sake of doing research for for example like somebody else you might you might be researching for others for example like okay you're doing questionnaire you're doing some sort of uh, statistical analysis i mean the, the the final question is supposed to be what is the impact of that particular research because actual research is a very like process based research it's very impactful every single stages of the process you're not looking at to the final process of the research rather you're enjoying the process itself every single stages that the way that you reflect the way that your student will will get for example will be very impactful and that's why i think actual research should be uh, should be conducted every single teacher because it's not just for the for example it's not just for the first degree i have been um i have proved that actual research can be done for master's degree actual research can be done for phd and even actual research can be done for practitioner who are currently in school or even teacher educator as well Yes, yes. Okay, um, saya dah terlalu tertarik dengan uh, Syafiq Aiman ni sampai saya terlupa nak tengok kita punya viewer ya. Eh. Uh, terima kasihlah kepada semua viewer uh, yang dah, dah masuk ya. Yeah. Mai sangat tu saya tak boleh nak sebut lah ya. Yeah. Cuba kita tengok terima kasih kepada semua yang telah masuk. Uh, nanti sebentar at the end of this, uh, jangan terus keluar. Saya akan bagikan QR code dan link untuk tuan-puan, um, untuk viewer semua untuk um, register ya untuk kita punya CJ lah ya. Um, okay, um, kita boleh beralih kepada soalan daripada viewer kita daripada Sakura Kairin ya. Uh, dari mana ni eh, nama pun sedap ni. Dia kata Assalamualaikum doktor. Okay, Assalam. Boleh ke kongsi tips cara-cara macam mana boleh sambung pengajian ke luar negara? Saya inspire kami guru-guru pelatih. Oh guru pelatih. Hmm, dia sangat teruja lah. 
Ya, saya pun tengok you punya Facebook sekejap kat sini, sekejap kat Morocco, sekejap kat Spain. Ya. Pergi present paper kan, geram banyak. Okey, bagilah sikit ni pada boleh Sakura ni. Dia kata macam mana ni tips? Macam mana boleh untuk menyambung pengajian ke luar negara ni? Silakan Dr. Shafiq. I mean there has been quite a lot of opportunity out there that you can for example apply if you want to do for example master's degree there are a lot of scholarship that you can apply um but you must you must show brilliantly how your proposal of um of your master's or your phd and then this is maybe 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 it's quite intense process of application but at the end of the day it's quite worth it so it semuanya macam um balik pada you punya passion si adakah you you buat ni sekadar macam um sekadar nak mendapat master ataupun PhD or you really want um to to improve your professional learning or to improve the the way that you teach or or something else so passion based and then you know cuba sedaya upaya untuk apply banyak um you know banyak peluang yang kita boleh apply bukan sahaja di Malaysia tapi kita boleh apply for example daripada luar negara banyak scholarship yang yang ada dan itulah yang saya buat sebab saya bukan semata-mata bergantung kepada um, kepada uh, apa yang berada di Malaysia namun kita apply macam banyak uh, for example sekarang banyak grant ni dia kena pada dua negara yang saya dapat dan um, dan itu adalah lebih kepada you know passion interest and then keep continue uh, keep continue uh, the way that you you know make proposal um, untuk untuk research dan scholarship Uh, masa mula-mula uh, you memohon dulu uh, macam siapa eh yang memberi galakan untuk uh, you nak sambung belajar dulu I mean it's quite obvious that Dr. Zaila one of my <laughs> probably um, inspired um, scholar in the field that made me to pursue my master's degree and again because I'm, I'm passionate uh, the way that um to improve the practice the way that uh to improve the the the, the research based research one of the uh, i think one of the question in the facebook they say that the collection research not classroom research uh, yeah well, classroom research yeah i think this is quite fascinating because um well classroom research can be divided into many ways isn't it but um some of the classroom research might not be actual research but um if 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 they are like uh practitioner research and classroom research they could be called like um action research actually i don't really like um the way that um semantic discussion play around tak suka sangat macam mana kita you know membanding bezakan terminologi sebab at the end of the day is is all the the focus of the research that we are doing mm-hmm. okay um Uh, saya nak tanya sikit pasal uh, ada yang saya dapat call eh, daripada eh, kita punya dalam dari segi uh, kawan-kawan kita di KPM sekarang ni isu yang besar di Malaysia ialah tentang uh, STEM education sebab you pun I tengok um, you are doing STEM kan you, you buat banyak research dari segi dalam bidang STEM education So ini satu uh, isu yang sangat besar di Malaysia di mana um, kita daripada tak, 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 daripada zaman bila entah kita nak 60 40 60% people in science and 40% in non science ni sampai hari ni kita tak susah nak nak capai ni isu yang masalah yang besar di Malaysia macam mana kita nak naikkan lagi uh, students participation in STEM boleh bagi pandangan sikit doktor macam mana caranya well saya rasa <laughs> Saya rasa Dr. Zaila, um, benda ni macam bukan saja berlaku di Malaysia, di UK, okay. di, for example di England. Mana-mana di pun Korea. sama. Uh, dia juga menghadapi benda yang sama. Mana-mana okay. pun sama. Tapi tapi apa yang lebih diterapkan dalam, kita bukan nak kata benda yang, for example, like new pendekatan yang baru. So, uh, saya suka macam, uh, bukan terkesan lah, lebih kepada macam, sebab saya tak suka penggunaan, semantik. Okay, now we call STEM and then there is a improvement and development called STEAM because they include art in it. Kita tak perlu macam nak membanding bezakan antara pendekatan mm. dengan satu pendekatan yang baru sebab semua pendekatan sebenarnya sama je. And then, for mm. example like we call like 21st century learning before and then mm. beforehand we call it HOTS and then everything else. Mm. So it's not it's not about that. It's not it's all about how we for example the the the, the science 
the science itself has to be fun, has to be active in the classroom. The science itself should be engaged more rather than being um, a textbook method um, of, you, of you delivering the, 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 the teaching of science. And maybe some of the teachers that I have been doing the research with, they, they, they always say that, oh, we have so many works to do, we not even think about that. I said, yeah, that's fine. But in terms of professional learning, how you improve the way that you teach is something that could be done better, should be reflect on. And then we should more, mm -hmm. the way that we engage the children in the classroom, whatever method we use, is more like engaging them to love science in the first place. It's all about the interest of the children, how about the engagement of the children. In this STEM education, we should not be uh, considered as, uh, as the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, for example, because, because we don't want the student to... Uh, to distinguish every single subject, for example. But when we do teach science, for example, um, I can give you an example. For example, we develop a curriculum, what we call bird curriculum. When we teach the student birds, there, is, there, there are elements of the science, the technology, engineering, and mathematics in it. And then, for example, if you teach, um, if you teach birds, there are science elements in it, how you do the experiment. There are numeracy elements in it, how you calculate the number of birds came to your house. There are engineering elements in it, how you make, uh, how you build, um, for example, bird houses. There are literacy elements in it, how you spell, for example, pigeon, how you spell eagle, how you spell uh, robin and everything mm -hmm. else. So this is something that naturally comes to the teaching, that really comes to the, uh, to the lesson organically. You don't need to say to the children, oh, okay, today, today we're going, uh, kita, kita hari ini akan belajar tentang uh, numeracy dalam pengajaran burung. Kita mengambil kira satu, tambah satu, dua. Kita tak perlu, tapi, tapi ia, ia lebih kepada naturally come. For example, when we doing the experiment, there are some addition um, and some tolak, tambah dan sebagainya yang terlibat dalam pengajaran tersebut. So that's what we call um, a transdisciplinary uh, curriculum and then that one of um, yang saya tengah buat research sekarang macam mana kita develop curriculum STEM dalam pengajaran burung. Okay, di di sana memang ada examination juga, examination juga macam Malaysia sama dia punya uh, penilaian ada national exam ke kat sana? The UK system is different sebab kita ada uh, England, uh, Scotland, Wales dan juga uh, hmm. Northern Ireland yang uh, yang sistem pendidikan dia berbeza. Uh, di Scotland, for example, kita tak ada kita tak ada um, peperiksaan ataupun what we call um, UPSR um, dan biasanya guru-guru di UK bukan biasa keseluruhan sekolah-sekolah di UK ni um, satu cikgu sekolah rendah dia akan mengajar um, semua subjek. Um, it's not specialized by the subject of, for example, like science, math dan sebagainya. Tapi kurikulum di sekolah. Oh di sana uh, lebih kepada uh, dia, dia macam generalist lah more than uh, cikgu dia belajar yes. semua subjek lah macam tu. Is that what I mean? Yes. Oh si macam dia tak dia ada. Focus, dia, fo dia focus on the skill rather than uh, subject. I see. Tahun ini di Malaysia, as you, you probably pun dah, dah, dah tahu, uh, mungkin budak-budak UPSR dan PT3 sangat gembira lah. Tahun 2020 ni tak ada examination. Yeah. Uh, jadi saya harap cikgu-cikgu waktu PKP ni uh, bolehlah kita apa tu buat aktiviti-aktiviti yang menyeronokkan, yang apa yang fun learning through digital classroom ya. Yeah. Ya mungkin dulu waktu examination kita rasa uh, takut tak cukup masa kan. Uh, hopefully uh, kita pun um, kat Malaysia ni pun dah trying to moving away from examination ya. Yeah. Um, so insyaAllah hopefully um, kita perlukan sebenarnya orang-orang macam Syafiq ni untuk yeah, help kita punya step education kat Malaysia ni ya. Yeah. Uh, InsyaAllah nanti balik bolehlah sama-sama contribute ya. Yeah. So, macam mana kita nak bangunkan balik ya, STEM education kat Malaysia ni. Kita tengok soalan ada lagi tak? Hmm, daripada Fauzia ni. So impressed dia kata, Dr. Shafiq, how do you get the idea to go this far? Who really inspired you? Ha, dia kata, macam mana you ada idea to go this far? Did you ever think about um, what you're doing today? Masa you dulu? Ya? Yeah. 
how do you get this idea to come into what you are today? That's what she meant, I think. Well, well, I thought that has been <laughs> that has has, has been answered. Um, um, I think I think because it's because the patient of the Asian research, and then it it, it really comes to your mind how you reflect yourself. When you self-critical, when you self-critical to what you are doing, you found that oh, sebenarnya banyak lagi benda yang aku pun tak tahu sebenarnya, and then banyak lagi benda yang you you eager to learn, and then the patient of macam mana you nak eager to learn is something that uh, really motivate me because I found that very useful, very um very interesting. Even I have learned um macam mana cognitive science um for example how how the children cognitive works during the implementation of the inquiry itself how does their behavior how does they react from from the teaching um and learning and and that's something has been very very fascinating even though it's not my particular area of of what we call um expertise at that at that particular time but again i have i have learned uh, the psychological perspective of how the children really learn science how we understand science how we do understand um, the fact that for example um for example um each of the science concept um can be can be teach or or learn during during the teaching of science so i think because of um you know because lebih kepada saya suka untuk belajar mengetahui benda yang baru and then uh, cuba untuk mempertingkatkan um apa yang saya telah tahu okay um since uh, for your information, Dr. Shafiq, uh, with us today is guru-guru yang majoring in special uh, special education, yeah, uh, children in uh, special education, guru pendidikan khas masalah pembelajaran, yeah. Uh, boleh tak lah alang layu ya yeah, daripada UK tu, uh, boleh tak you kongsi sikit macam mana di segi pendidikan pendidikan khas di sana, di Scotland, boleh share sikit tak tentang special education kat sana? Um, one of the, I think one, one of the uh, policies that um, pendidikan, pendidikan khas lebih pada masalah pembelajaran, pembelajaran lah, iaitu learning disabilities yeah. um, yang uh, bukan lebih kepada physical disability. Um, mereka lebih kepada um, inclusive education. Itu yang diperjuangkan oleh sekolah-sekolah uh, mm -hmm. di UK. Mereka perlu masuk kepada mainstream education. Um, mm -hmm. dan guru-guru yang uh, berada di kelas mereka perlu mengetahui apa apa um, apa yang mereka perlu um, maksudnya apa apakah um, um, yang mereka perlu uh, khususkan untuk pelajar-pelajar yang tersebut tapi kalau macam sebab uh, perkara ini memang very specific by individu um, disebabkan itulah macam uh, bila satu pengajar yang berlaku di mainstream class ada sesengah um, budak sama macam Malaysia kita ketepikan dan kita kita ajar pada uh, pada small group of the children tapi um, mereka perlu di diagnosis biasanya um, dari semasa ke semasa sebab mungkin um, disabilities mereka akan berubah dan apa yang mereka minat dan sebagainya apa yang mereka nak belajar tapi apa yang menariknya uh, biasanya curriculum di uh, di Scotland ia bergantung kepada guru itu sendiri bagaimana dia nak uh, mereka bentuk kurikulum yang nak um, yang nak diajar kepada uh, kepada murid-murid uh, bukannya ditentukan oleh um, you know bukannya ditentukan oleh kementerian ataupun sebagainya dan um, based on that situation itulah yang menyebabkan guru-guru ini lebih banyak um, mungkin peluang ataupun masa untuk mereka bentuk kurikulum berdasarkan kebolehan pelajar-pelajar uh, mereka yang mungkin yang bermasalah um, uh, yang bermasalah boleh dikeluarkan dari kelas dia, dia mempunyai spesialis yang tertentu dari sekolah ke sekolah tapi dia lebih memperjuangkan kepada inclusive education sebab kita tak mahu uh, nak melabelkan pelajar yang uh, pendidikan khas mahupun pelajar yang biasa even it's quite sensitive matter in the UK dan biasanya kita tak kita tak melabelkan mereka sebagai um, special need children we don't really call them like that so it's just like um you just dismiss that title uh jadi maknanya um uh, special education ni memang dalam sekolah harus perdanalah di sana uh, maknanya cikgu-cikgu uh, semua cikgu 
memang boleh deal lah ya dengan dengan inclusive education ni kat situ ya. Okey, uh, sebab bila sebab murid-murid uh, student saya ni memang major dalam special education. Uh, uh, so what is your advice to my students? So I rasa kalau macam tadi I tengok dekat UK, uh, the teacher is very empowered kan because they have to design their own um, macam sort of their own curriculum kan, apa yang dia rasa. Maknanya di situ peranan action research sangat penting saya rasa. Bila cikgu um, macam 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 dia tak ada macam you kena macam ni, ni buku teks you kena pakai, ni aktiviti mana, kalau dia sendiri tu maknanya uh, peranan action research tu sangat penting. Bagi seorang guru di sana. Bagaimana dengan dia punya amalan guru-guru menjalankan kajian tindakan di sana? Is it do they do they actually practice action research in the classroom for the teachers are there? Well, I would say some of them up? has. Well, well, yeah, I would say some of them might has been practice action research, but uh, I, I would not say all of them because um, because not all of the teachers really see action research. Um, okay. As a as a good research in the classroom, but um, it's all it's all come down to individual passion and interest, isn't it? But again, they have to reflect every single lesson that they teach. For example, in in Scotland, they have to reflect the way that they teach and then the way that they can improve afterward. Even though they don't call as an as an action research, but it's more like a, a reflect reflect based practice um, um, where they they. That there has been a lot of ongoing discussion how to improve individual uh, performance. I'm sure when you do research kat sana, you probably banyak uh, buat school visits ya yeah, kat sana. Ada buat banyak tak school visits kat sana? And apa you rasanya bestnya kat sana? Because you've been to primary school in Malaysia and you've been uh, doing a lot of research in the primary school over there. So you nampak tak apa yang best yang, yang kat sana? yang you boleh share, yang mungkin boleh inspire cikgu-cikgu kat sini? Yeah, um, I think it's quite um, incomparable because um, mungkin dari segi um, sebab sekolah tu sendiri mempunyai authority dalam dalam kurikulum mereka, uh, mereka tak terikat dengan kurikulum kementerian dan mungkin dari segi, I think workload still sama. Kalau kita lihat dari segi um, papers uh, tentang there are a lot of discussy um, um, uh, berkenaan dengan workload. That's fine because the the, the filing and everything still the same. But again, dia mempunyai authority dalam membina curriculum. Dia mempunyai authority macam mana nak design curriculum tersebut um, dan bagaimana dia nak menilai pelajar pelajar itu tersebut. Ia bergantung pada sekolah. Dan kalau kita kita, kita lihat number number pada setiap kelas tu um, kurang lah. Uh, tak adalah sampai 35 dan sebagainya and and seorang guru boleh boleh kenal age of the children sebab dalam dalam pendidikan sekolah rendah mereka um, lebih pada macam um, satu kelas satu guru dan satu guru tu kan aja semua benda dan dia ada teaching assistant lah and then dengan masa yang fleksibel ia membolehkan cikgu tu sendiri jadi kreatif jadi kreatif macam mana you nak design the lesson, macam mana you nak you nak you nak improve individual performance bukan fokus pada semua kelas. Tapi apa yang um, kita boleh uh, mungkin boleh implement the way that uh, they teach is more fun. We we really inspired the student macam mana untuk um, kita deliver the classroom lebih kepada um, apa yang murid tu sendiri minat untuk belajar. Tapi kalau dalam kekangan dalam kurikulum, for example, I've shown in my thesis macam mana kita nak integrate the syllabus and then the curriculum dengan uh, pengajaran inquiry, ya, for example dalam sains, yang mungkin uh, tidak perlu pun kita macam mengikut 100% kepada buku teks, for example, but we still can can take up to the next level where the student can engage and um, and feel empowered to their own learning. So it, it's all come down to you the way that you structure the lesson because you still have the power to 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 design your own lesson. Macam mana pula uh, tentang CPD? Macam mana in service training untuk cikgu-cikgu yang dah uh, mengajar? Macam mana dia punya di segi in service training tu dibuat macam mana di sana? 
Yeah, um, in, uh, in Scotland, we call, um, we call career long professional learning. Professional learning yang uh, melibatkan guru-guru di sekolah dan juga um, community academic. Um, biasanya kita bersama dengan community di uh, universiti dan kita shape the um, the professional learning courses based on what the teachers need. So basically the teachers come to us, alright, okay, we want to do some sort of curriculum development of this particular area and then we would like to learn this and that and then we are going to do uh, some sort of um, activity and could you please, you know, trying to um, facilitate us to do this and that. So that's what we, we deliver to them rather than we giving them what they, what probably they don't want to um, to learn, but rather okay, the teachers come to us and then say, okay, we wanted to improve this sort of um, physics in terms of the, 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 the science learning of the children, for example. So that's what we did in terms of CVD. It's very much on the practitioner oriented um, uh, courses. Okay, saya sempat lupa nak tengok soalan kat sini ya. Kita tengok ada soalan daripada Tamil Salvam. Amara Tiran, if you have the chance to change one thing in... Wah, ini macam soalan menteri ini ya. If you have the, kata, the chance to change one thing in Malaysian education, what would it be and why? If you can change one thing in Malaysia education, what is it and why? Well, one thing could be where will be where I will be positioned at, really. But um, but um, um, if 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 I happen to be one of the, uh, for example, um, I don't know the 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 the, the policymaker probably. One thing that I that I would I, I would change is not change. It's more like trying to improve because I think change is not possible, but improve is something that's possible and could be done um, a lot faster and better. Um, so, um, really, what I would like to do is is is, is trying is trying to educate the teachers itself how they should do the research in the classroom and then the way that they should reflect on their own practice rather than look at on the children performance for example they should look children's at the way that the way that the way that you teach the way that the way that you like, like what i said the way that you're asking the children so we should really bring up research as a culture in the school because the more research in the school the more that you could learn and then the more that you could develop your own professional learning and that's the way that you could improve. You cannot change education system unless you change from your own classroom. Because that's what I believe, that's what I'm passionate about in terms of classroom research. Because that's all we can do. You cannot wait, well for, another, you cannot wait for another person to change the entire thing. It, it just started from, from your own classroom because that's where it all started. And then when I say this, some people might be criticized, okay, you, you say that because you're not in the system, but I, well, but well, when I am in the system, I'm trying to change the things that I can change. It's not something that I cannot change because something that could be done, just, just get it done rather than, you know, rather than keep complaining or crit criticizing. So that's what I, that's, that's the, the, what I would like to do. More research culture in school, more trying to improve on your pedagogical practice so that it could reflect on the children. Alhamdulillah. I think it's well said from you. Yeah? All the changes begin with the teacher uh, themselves. Yeah? Uh, ada sini uh, daripada Haliza Hussein, Dr. Shafiq. Can you share what action research model that you use? Well, there is no specific action research model that probably workable for everyone, isn't it? But um, action research model is quite simple. Everything is the same where you the research process is very prominent and very important um, in terms of you doing the research. So it started with, it's, it's of course it started with the way that you reflect yourself. It's more like a reflection. You, you come up with some sort of what we call thematic concern. What is the most concerning area in your teaching that you want to change? Don't look at the children yet, but look at on yourself. 
what you want to change. And then you have to learn how you could change that. And then you have to reflect back and then you have to try in your classroom and you have to collect the data. And then the model is quite simple. The four phase model is workable for, for, for most of us, for most of the practitioner. Even though actual research is, could be done in the classroom, could be done in the, for example, in the university or for organizational or, or community-based actual research, there are, there are some sort of something like that. But it's all workable for, for any kind of research, the, the fourth phase of research, which is reflect, trying to implement, you reflect back, you collect the data, and then just do, just really what you, you need to do is you just enjoy the process. Once you enjoy the process, I think you will like action research very much. Okay, I think um, it's sudah tak sedar, eh? sudah pun satu jam sebenarnya kita bersiaran secara FB live uh, di Facebook saya. Uh, I think I want to sum up ya saya. Ya, mungkin di lain masa kita boleh lagi uh, buat ya, uh, mungkin tajuk yang lain juga. Okay, uh, this for the my students kat luar sana. Um, boleh tak doktor beri, uh, bagi sikit nasihat ya, apakah nasihat doktor kepada bakal murid-murid saya, student saya yang insya Allah akan bergraduat ya. Eh? May ni dah habis dah. They are doing, going to their final exam now. So what is your advice to them? Going out to Raja, uh, from Raja Melewa very, very soon, inshallah. So what is your advice to them? Well, as what I said is you should never stop learning because once you stop learning, you become very saturated in the system. You lack of ideas. You have not been much progress in your career. So keep learning. Yeah, and then keep building up your professional learning, professional practice, do whatever you can in order to improve and to improve your practice and just don't become like a norm where you go and teach and you get the salary at the end of the month. Rather, you, have, you can do whatever you can. And these days, there are a lot of you know, resources that are available in order for you to improve your own practice, whatever you can. Okay, uh, nampaknya... Um... Uh, masa begitu mencemburu again eh uh, I'm very happy lah Dr. Shafiq uh, Shafiq lah ya eh, Shafiq Aiman uh, kerana sudi berkongsi dengan saya pada malam ini bercakap dengan student-student saya ya ada ramai ya eh. basically rapa. ada lagi soalan-soalan ni ya eh. uh, mungkin kita akan jawab selepas uh, waktu official kita lah uh, uh, lepas ini uh, saya ingin mengucapkan sekali lagi thank you So you, Dr. Shafiq, uh, sudi menerima uh, jemputan uh, saya sebagai kita punya panel as the second panel today. Uh, sekarang pukul berapa ya di sana ya? What time kat sana? Um, tiga petang. Oh, tiga petang. Uh, kita dah pukul sepuluh malam. Okay, and juga thank you kepada semua viewer-viewer yang, yang sudi uh, share, yang sudi tanya soalan, yang ucap tanya kepada kami. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. Uh, okay, uh, so I hope uh, kita akan uh, berjumpa lagi di lain masa. Okay, uh, maybe you can uh, tutup juga dengan what is actually, if you were to come back, what would be your plan in Malaysia? If you were to come back, I hope soon. What's well, your plan? One of my uh, ultimate goal is probably the way that um, I, I, I would like to expand more about the research that I'm doing in 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 the most uh, specific um in the most strategic important areas of of malaysia particularly in the rural areas on the way that we could improve the way that they teach science so that they could impact uh, impact the children and and the community itself so i would like to pursue on the inquiry um and action research which is um the most uh, research interest Um, that I have in 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 my field. Okay, kita pun berharap lah. Kita pun menunggu nunggu lah. Uh, when you come back, you let me know lah. Eh, okay. Okay, thank you again. Thank you everybody. Uh, saya mm, berhenti di sini. Thank you to you. Uh, saya sudah hidup dengan Wabilai Taufik Wahidaya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Thank you kepada semua ya. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Zaila. Okay, Syafiq, jangan keluar dulu. Uh, jangan keluar dulu ya. Kalau kita ada masa ni, cuba Syafiq tengok sikit soalan yang last tu. Dia kata bagaimana eh, cara mereka membantu pihak sekolah ni masa official dah tamat ya. Eh. Uh, kita nak tengok, dia kata macam mana nak bantu pihak sekolah 
macam mana ibu bapa di sana membantu pihak sekolah? Macam mana eh? Soalan daripada Zari ni. Actually, Bagaimana cara um, mereka membantu? Ibu bapa merupakan salah satu stakeholder yang yang memang berkait langsung dalam mereka bentuk kurikulum di sekolah. Itu yang mungkin saya lupa untuk mention sebelum ni. Tapi kita memang hmm. um, tapi kita memang uh, melibatkan ibu bapa uh, macam mana untuk mereka bentuk kurikulum uh, bertanya tentang mereka sangat rapat dengan pihak sekolah even uh, disebabkan mungkin komuniti yang kecil kot so lebih pada macam mana um, you know uh, 